Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. Um, last night we had some uh, more details coming through about the potential Greek deal. Um, today is pretty much uh, a very important day of, uh, of, of negotiation between the Eurozone leaders and uh, and Greece. The uh, project, the potential kind of bridging loan has been pooed by Germany uh, and that's having a bit of a, a kind of a dampening effect on, on many other markets right, right across uh, Right across the globe. Now we had some actually quite impressive U.S. data come out yesterday um, in regards to their unemployment claims, which was a, a little bit better than expected. So the latest kind of data coming out of America has been a real mixed bag, and that's what's causing all this volatility. So we were down a lot, a lot further um, at one point during the U.S. therapy. We ended closing bang on the potential uh, resistance at 17.9. Let's just say it's 18,000. Today we're still up there just now. Um, the Nasdaq, I think, has reached almost, I think it's 4% away from the all-time high, um, which would be even above its tech bubble uh, year 2000 high that it made as um, you know, people are still looking for, for, for growth stories out there because the yields are not that great right across the right across the group. So um, there are still further gains to uh, be eked out in the global equity markets, I think, depending on how the ma global macroeconomic picture goes. China is obviously going to be a big part of that. Um, but the um, the American macro data is very keenly watched. We've seen some interesting moves on the U.S. dollar overnight in the back of those jobless claims. It's usually because weekly figure. It's not usually a big deal. But um, after the double shift OMC, you know, people latch on to any decent data coming out of America and immediately go, "Oh, they're going to raise rates sooner." Uh, as soon as anything negative comes out, "Oh no, they're going to delay those those rate rate hikes." So. I don't think people really have a, a, a real handle on exactly which way the Fed's going to go. Um, even they, even they, have, they themselves have given a little bit of mixed signals. They've hedged their bets, I think. So uh, there's nothing definitive or set in stones. It makes it a little bit harder to, to read. But if you look at this in context, the US there is still trading near an all-time high there. So things are still looking pretty good. So moving on to the UK 100, it's a very similar picture. Still within this ascending triangle formation. We could do with the close above 6906.8 to um, really push on, um, getting closer to seven, that psychological 7,000 round number. Uh, if we move on to Japan, 225, now the yen's been strengthening slightly overnight. There was a Bank of Japan, Governor Kuroda, had been speaking um, about the Japanese economy and how they're going to tackle inflation. That's caused a, uh, a move to the up. So we actually broke through potential resistance at 18,306.5. We're still firmly in this potential channel that we've uh, that we've had on here for some time. Uh, 18,306 could be a, a, a potential springboard. Uh, for Japan or bridgehead for Japan to do five to push on higher. Failing that, we get a close below this level tonight, uh, and that basically means that all bets are off and that there could be quite a significant move to the downside before we reach potential support. So, hopefully, Japan to do five and maintains its momentum. Um, it's kind of hard to get excited by dollar yen. It's not been doing anything for the last couple of months. Uh, you, you are in this wave formation, the waves are getting tighter. Um, arguably, we could look to draw a level here, kind of hopeful that this is going to be a, a, a trend line support, but I'm not that uh, I'm not that bullish. In fact, I can probably get rid of many of these other support and resistance levels because we are a long way from any of these currently, and it'll help tidy things up a little bit. Everything's all flattening out right now, so this needs a bit of a catalyst. Either America needs to do something or Japan needs to do something, but the, in the FX world, dollar yen is no longer that exciting. So if we move on to West Texas crude, um, we had a bullish day yesterday. There's rig data out today, which is supposed to show a reduction in available rigs for hire uh, for them to um, do more exploration, which is going to have a, a positive uh, impact, or you know, traders will look at it as a positive impact on uh, on, on crude oil prices, uh, albeit obviously the effect of those rigs wouldn't be felt for quite some time. But nevertheless, the markets uh, are taking um, bullish momentum from, from statements like that. Uh, crude oil inventories uh, were, were quite high as ever, um, but we are not yet on the right side. If this, is, if this was a ascending triangle formation, we are on the wrong side of this potential trend line. Uh, what was support now expected to act as resistance. Moving on to gold, gold had a bit of a shot in the arm after the dovish FOMC, um, but as you can see, it's completely reversed course once again. Uh, on the daily charts right there. This is a pretty bad candle to, to have there yesterday. Uh, it's been all over the place, incidentally. Uh, as the US dollar began to gain a little bit more strength after those uh, jobless claims numbers um, that were way, way more bullish than what the market had expected. Uh, 
Gold can kind of catch a break. It's, it's pretty volatile right now. 12-18 uh, still potential resistance. This is a real ugly candle formation to have um, with a failure to break through potential resistance. So 11 is the next potential support level. And if we move on to euro dollar, the euro is getting hit a little bit harder as uh, that debt. And today is the day uh, that they're supposed to make some sort of deal with uh, with Greece. I think there's actually about two weeks, in fact, before they get to a final, final meeting. But there's an important session today um, potentially trying to sort out this bridge loan for Greece. But as I said, Germany's playing hardball. If this is a symmetrical triangle formation, this candle here is not good news. If we close below this, that would be a, a technical break and that would potentially open up a move towards one spot 11. And then we've got a cable uh, and cable had been on a good run uh, on the wrong side of potential uh, support slash resistance, one spot 54, 24. Um, today's close is going to be very interesting. Uh, it needs to stay above there if we're going to have a shot of rechallenge in one spot 56. If we have a look at the economic data, there's actually a fair amount of uh, European and UK data out, which would be good for uh, Euro dollar and uh, cable, hopefully. You've got German PMI, you've got Eurozone PMI, and you've got UK retail sales and public finance data due out. And if we fast forward on to Monday, uh, Monday you've got more German data, business survey, IFO business expectations, and existing home sales. And then on Tuesday, you've got uh, GDP in Germany, house price data again from the UK, and then you've got CPI from the Eurozone. Uh, and then you've got, uh, to finish things up, you've got CCI from the US. So you've got a fair amount of data on Monday and Tuesday next week. Not an unbelievable amount today, but perhaps enough to uh, keep our head above some major support and resistance levels. Anyway, join me again tomorrow. Uh, not tomorrow, join me again on Monday to find out what happened next.